In this example, I'll find the response of an undamped system. I am asked to plot the response of a spring mass system under a harmonic force for the following data. The mass is 5 kilograms. The spring constant is 2,000 newtons per meter. The force is defined as a function of 100 multiplied by cosine 30t in newtons. The initial displacement is 0.1 meters, and my initial velocity is 0.1 meters per second. And I'll go ahead and start Patron. Uh, one file you'll need is the load.csv file. And uh, you'll find a link to this PDF and the CSV file in the video description below. The load.csv file is a representation of uh, the various forces at various times. The, once I have Patron open, I'll start a new Patron database. Call it example 311. Hit OK here. Now I'll first define two nodes. One at the origin, another one at a uh, one zero zero. Now, if I turn on my label control and see the node numbers, I have nodes one and two here. Next, uh, I want to define an element. So, under element, edit, go to bar, connect node one and node two. So you see, node one was dropped here, and node two goes node 1 here and once your cursor is in the next node box selected in the the bar elements automatically create it and one last thing we have to make a point element for our point mass so element edit shape should be point select this node so you see a triangle indicating the point element so now let's define our spring constant so under the properties tab, go to Windy Properties and click Spring. We'll give it a, a name of K. For input properties, we are told it has a stiffness of 2,000 newtons per meter. Our degree of freedom will be UX, so it can uh, move left and right. Make sure you have UX for both of these. Hit OK and for your application region, select Beam here. I select this element, element 1. Add it to the application region, select OK, and hit apply. Next, we want to add a mass value to this point element. So under 0, D properties, click mass, call it a M. Up for options, select lumped, and under input properties, give it a mass of 5 kilograms as stated in the problem. Hit OK, and for your application region, select this element. Uh, first, select point elements here, then select element 2. Add it to the application region, hit OK, and hit Apply. You see here we've created this property now. Let me turn on the model tree, and you can see what we've done so far. We've created a mass, and we've defined a spring constant. Next is to define our load and boundary conditions. So here in the load BCs tab, click on nodal displacement constraint. Call this uh, fixed for input data, um, just to make things simple. Let's restrain the one, two, and three direction and rotations about the one, two, and three directions. The one, two, and three are the X, Y, and Z directions. Click OK and for application region, select point here. Select this left, where we're actually working with the FEM, not the geometry. So select FEM here and hit nodes. Add node 1, OK, and apply. Now, we need to create a time-dependent load case. So here, the load BCs tab, create load case. Call it time LC. For type, select time-dependent and hit apply. For force, or before that, I have to import my force data. So under LBC fields, select non-spatial. Here, call it a 
harmonic force. The domain is time, go to input data, import, export the CSV file, but we need to make a quick um, option change. We want to ignore the first line of the .csv file. So navigate to where the load.csv file is and hit OK and hit apply or hit enter to make the field. On the left you'll notice that the harmonic force field is here. If I now go to nodal create force, type in F and click input data, I can select and provide a value of 1 in the X, 0 in the Y and Z. In the box next to it, I need to provide the field I just created, harmonic force. Hit OK. From my application region, I select this node. Add it, OK, and apply. So currently we're working in the time LC load case. I need to make a quick modification to it. So far we only have the force in this load case. I need to include the displacement fix that we created a while ago. I simply click it to add it here. Once it's there, I hit apply to update the load case. And now all the conditions are in that one load case. The problem statement tells us there's an initial condition for displacement and velocity, so I'll do that now. Here under initial conditions, I can select displacement. So initial displacement, my input data will be 0.1 in the x, 0 in the y, and z. Hit OK, and your application region will be this point, note 2. So add it, OK, and apply. In addition to this, we have an initial velocity. So scroll up and for object, change it to initial velocity. Here we'll call it initial velocity. And then our input data would be almost the same, 0.100. Hit OK here for your application region, select this node, add it, OK, and apply. Let me turn the markers off and on. So, so far this is what we have. We've defined a full constraint here on the left. We've defined our harmonic force on the right where the point mass is located. We have an initial displacement of 0.1 meters and we have an initial velocity of 0.1 meters per second. With all this defined, I can move on to my analysis. Click Analyze Entire Model under Solution Type, select transient response and your formulation should be the direct method. Click OK. Under subcases, select time LC and make sure the name's here under subcase name. For output request, or first let me modify the subcase parameters. For defined time steps, I want 200 time steps spaced uh, 0.01 seconds apart. If so in the end, I'll have a time history of two seconds. Make sure it says 200 and approximately 0.01 here. Hit OK, OK here. Under output requests, I don't want to know my SPC forces. I do want to know my velocities and accelerations just in case you want to look at these. I'll hit apply to confirm the modification. I'll click cancel. Under subcase select, I don't want to run the nearly empty subcase called default. I want to run the time LC subcase with all the boundary conditions. Click OK and hit apply to analyze this. Once that's done, go to access results and click XDB. Hit apply to import the results. Here under results, click graph. Click this icon to reveal all the results, highlight all of them, and here we'll review the displacements in the X direction first for node 2. And I'll hit apply. So here's the response, and let me clean up the numbers so they're easier to read. Once I hit apply again, I see that the response goes from 0 seconds to 2 seconds. 
and my response goes from negative 0.16 inches to 0.6 or negative 0.16 meters to 0.16 meters. When I compare this to what we should get, this is essentially what we do get. If you want to view the velocities or accelerations, you would simply go back here, select, say, translational velocities. Once you make that switch, hit apply. You'll notice that, if you can really tell, there would be a 0.1 initial velocity here. And for accelerations, we can also view that here. Make sure to save and that concludes this example.